How's it going, everybody? Welcome to our next episode of the Pastors Podcast here at Western Heights Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Dustin. We've got Pastor John here with me, and we're diving in to the next section of the Baptist Faith and Message 2000, which is Baptism and the Lord's Supper. So thank you guys for joining us here and listening to this podcast, and we hope it'll give you a, a, a better opportunity of, of grasping and understanding what the Word says about baptism, the Lord's Supper, and why we think it's important and a vital aspect of the church. So let's read the section first, and then we'll dive right in. Christian baptism is the immersion of a believer in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is an act of obedience symbolizing the believer's faith in a crucified, buried, and risen Savior, the believer's death to sin, the burial of the old life, and the resurrection to walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus. It is a testimony to his faith in the final resurrection of the dead. Being a church ordinance, it is a prerequisite to the privileges of church membership and to the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is a symbolic act of obedience whereby members of the church, through partaking in the bread and the fruit of the vine, memorialize the death of the Redeemer and anticipate his second coming. So John, let's dive right in here. Explain why we baptize by immersion and, and what it means that we baptize in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we've talked about this a couple of times in the podcast as we've been moving through things. We've talked about baptism, specifically baptism by immersion. Uh, what, what baptism by immersion would be called would be the mode of baptism. And so there are several different modes of baptism. Um, some folks baptize by sprinkling. Some folks baptize by what's called effusion. They want to pour water onto someone. Um, other folks baptize like we do by immersion. Immersion simply means that you are put completely under the water and brought back up out of the water. And the reason that we baptize by immersion is because that's the example that we see from Jesus. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he was baptized by immersion. It says he went down into the water. He came up from the water. He wasn't sprinkled. They didn't pour water on him. He was put into the water. Another reason that we baptize by immersion has to do with the symbolic nature of immersion. We are uh, dead to our old way of life. We are buried uh, with Christ in the water. We are raised to walk in a newness of life. And so that's why uh, we baptize by immersion. Simply, we're trying to be obedient to what God has told us we should do. Now, we also baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because we are being obedient to our God. Uh, we're doing exactly what he has told us to do. He told us to go and to make disciples of all nations and then to baptize them. And so when we baptize them, we are baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And as we consider the modes of baptism, the, the, the primary and most important piece of this is the theology of baptism. Why do we baptize theologically? What is the point of baptism? Um, and so as we start with that question and we answer that question as it's an act of obedience, we answer that question as it's symbolic, the next question from that then becomes what's the best way to be obedient? And it would be to do it exactly the way that Christ did. What's the best way to be symbolic, to be fully immersed and fully removed from the water? And so the mode of baptism becomes secondary to really the big question of what is baptism? What does baptism do? Why are we called to baptize? And then from that, we get an answer for what is baptism? And so we look at the theology of baptism, and from that, we understand that immersion uh, is the best way to accomplish what God has set before us. Absolutely. So, Dustin, when we're talking about it being an act of obedience, let's let's talk about how it's an act of obedience symbolizing faith in the gospel message. Well, I think ultimately, it's it's baptism is set up for the new believer um, to be a public profession of of faith that we're you know we're called to to profess our allegiance to Christ and to to admit, believe, and confess and and to understand that Jesus has has died for our sins and. He's been risen and he will return. And all of these things are things that the new believer now uh, holds to and is now committing to. Um, and he should be doing that corporately within the local church. And so in doing so, uh, the first act of obedience is that we show that to the church. We show that to the world through baptism. Baptism is given to us as an opportunity to take a first step and say, God, I'm serious about what I say I now believe. I'm serious about obeying you. You've called me to do this. It may be scary. It may 
make it may be just like trying to public speak in front of people and it's one of the reasons why we typically when we baptize we ask people to give their testimony is that we want it to be this declaration of faith this public uh, act of obedience to tell the people in front of you and the people all around you i'm serious about my faith so it's an act of obedience symbolizing what we've already done absolutely and i mean when we're when we're uh, encouraging people to be baptized we're encouraging them just simply to do what god has told them to do and it's really that opportunity as dustin said to just stand before the people and say you know what i declare that man jesus is my savior and i am going to live for him. Uh, one of the things we need to remember in that process that it's awfully scary for people. One, uh, some people are afraid of water. They're afraid to be baptized for those reasons. Other people are afraid because uh, they, they have to say something or they, they might have to confess that Christ is their Lord and Savior. We understand that there are some fears that go along with that. But please remember, when, man, when you are baptized, you're being baptized in front of people that are celebrating your baptism. Um, you're not even having to, to make that testimony in front of a, a world that's going to jeer at you or laugh at you. Man, you're making this confession of faith in front of other brothers and sisters who have been down the same road as you, who have made the same confession of faith and who are uh, uh, cheering you on. And so as we're being obedient, uh, remember that uh, folks are there for you and they want to see you accomplish that obedient action, uh, that testimony that God would have for you to make. Exactly, exactly. And so, John, let's move forward because we just connected baptism to the local church. Why is baptism, you know, a, a necessary prerequisite for being a member of the local church and specifically Western Heights Baptist? Church membership uh, comes with accountability and accountability uh, means that we are agreeing that we're going to be obedient. And uh, the first act of obedience for a believer uh, who has confessed Jesus as their Savior and their Lord uh, is to be baptized. If we should find that someone would say, oh man, I want to be saved, but I refuse to be baptized, um, they're not being obedient. And if they're not willing to be obedient in that first act, then there is reason to believe they're not going to be obedient in, in other areas of their life and possibly even that they're not even saved. And so uh, we want to have a regenerate church membership. We want a membership that is full of those who are believers, who are obedient to Christ. And so we would encourage folks, and, and it is necessary for them to be baptized to become a member uh, here at the church. Right. And, and, and with that comes some, some complicated situations where you may have someone who becomes a member or who desires to become a member and they say, man, I, I was baptized previously in a different way, maybe in a different denomination. And, and I think the, the primary thing we have to focus on um, is whether or not uh, the baptism is a believer's baptism, right? If that baptism is uh, a first act of obedience mm -hmm. after someone comes to faith in Christ, um, then that is, that's an important piece of it. And so we would delineate between um, a believer's baptism and an infant baptism. And we would say, if you've come to Christ, you need to be baptized as a first act of obedience after coming to Christ. I think it's important to recognize that. But we also understand that there's a level of, of grace there to be had. And, and ultimately, it's a situation where we want to know the heart of the person. And we also are going to recommend that if that person's never been baptized by immersion, that they should. Um, but, man, it's really about the heart of, have you been baptized in a believer's baptism? Have you gone uh, to show your church, show the world that you are serious about your walk with Christ by participating in this act of obedience? That's the primary thing we want to focus on. But we also want people to experience the best version of what we think God has asked them to do, which would be the way Jesus did it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Dustin, as we kind of transition from baptism to the Lord's Supper, uh, maybe we could discuss a little bit about what it means that the Lord's Supper is a remembrance. Yeah. And this is, this is language that I think is so important because there's a lot of disagreement about what the Lord's Supper does and is amongst denominations. Um, but what we have to recognize is that the, when Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, in Scripture, man, it's it's ultimately for remembrance, that it is a reminder to the people who claim uh, Jesus of what happened on the cross, that it is a reminder of the gospel, it is a reminder to repent. That's another thing that we have to recognize, is that remembrance doesn't just mean I think about what happened. Remembrance is supposed to spur on something. There's an end goal to remembering, that I remember the broken body, I remember the spilled blood, and in doing so, I deal with my sin. In doing so, I am 
brought to either repentance if I need to, I'm edified if I'm if I'm living in a way uh, where there there are not things I need to actively repent of. Right, the gospel speaks to uh, so many things. Um, in our lives, whether we're a new believer or mature, we all need the gospel. We all need to preach it to ourselves. And Jesus gives us that ability through the Lord's Supper so we can remember what happened and then we can be spurred on to, to live more like Christ as we do that. Absolutely. And, and part of that remembrance is a connection not only to what uh, Jesus did for us, but what he promised that he's going to do. And so as we're, we're kind of connecting things together, man, we're remembering what Jesus has done, but we also remember his words, we remember his actions, we remember his promises. And, and, and there's a connection there as the, as the Confession of Faith says, or as the Baptist Faith and Message says, uh, it's a connection there to the future events that are going to take place of the second coming. And so we're reminded, not only did Jesus die for us, not only was he sacrificed for our sins, not only did, was he buried, not only did he raise on the third day, but he ascended to the right hand of the Father and he's coming again. And so as we're participating in communion, we're remembering uh, not only the things that he's done for us in the past, not only what he's doing for us in the present, but also what he's promised us in the future. Exactly. And I think it's great uh, for us to recognize that we all need to preach the gospel to ourselves. And this is what the Lord's Supper does. It gives us the opportunity to reflect and remember, but it gives us the opportunity to realize that we, you know, we're called to leave the elementary things in a way and, 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 and grow in maturity, especially in our theology. But we're never called to stop remembering the basic part of our faith, right? That Jesus died for us, that he rose again, that he's coming again. All of these things are things that should fill up our daily lives, that should fill up our minds, that if we're in need of repentance, what's going to bring us to repentance? The gospel. If we are uh, in need of edification, what's going to edify us? The gospel. All of these things that happen, happen because of the gospel. And so the Lord's Supper gives us this great opportunity to come together and say, we all sit under the truth of the gospel. And the gospel is what draws us to repentance. The gospel is what edifies us. The gospel is what brings us together in fellowship and worship. All of it revolves around the gospel. And the Lord's Supper is a symbol reminding us of that we need to sit back and we need to think about those things. And we need to let them permeate our thoughts. And that it's not a once a, you know, once in a lifetime thing that we think about the gospel, then we move on. And the gospel drives everything we have to recognize that. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I had to summarize, you know, uh, a couple of important comments on baptism and the Lord's Supper, the, the first comment would be, these things do not save you. It is by grace you are saved through faith. It's a gift of God. It's not of works lest anyone should boast. But, but secondly, if you are saved, you absolutely should be participating uh, in uh, these ordinances as they are described in God's word. Why? Because it is an act of obedience to God. We should be baptized. We should be participating in communion. Um, and we should also uh, be careful that we don't participate in communion in a manner that's unworthy. Uh, the Bible gives us severe warnings. There are many weak, many sick, many dead. Why? Because they took communion lightly. They did not deal with repentance in their own life and their own heart before they participated in communion. And communion is something that we have coming up, guys, something that you need to kind of have on your mind uh, on Easter Sunday. We're going to be participating in communion as a church, and, and we need to be getting our heads right, our hearts right, uh, so that we can participate in a way that brings God glory. So number one, these things don't save you. Number two, be obedient to God and participate in these things according to the the way that he's told us. And, and number three, do the best you can to reach what God's standard, what his example is. And you say, well, these things aren't going to save me. I'm not going to be more saved if I'm baptized by immersion than I was if I was sprinkled. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But at the same time, as Dustin said earlier, man, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some relevance to participating in baptism in the way that Jesus gave us that example. Not going to save us, not going to make us more of a Christian, but at the same time, it is being 100% obedient to what he's told us to do. And so I encourage you guys, as you're considering baptism, as you're considering uh, communion, and, and how do I do these things, and why do I do these things, man, never forget, they don't save you, but man, they are acts of obedience that we need to follow his instructions on when we participate. Yep, and, and I would close with this too, that, that it's recognized through how we talk about this throughout the whole podcast, but all of this has to be connected to the local church 
and local church membership. I mean, Amen. there's no... Uh, I, I don't think that there is a good example of baptism in the Lord's Supper that's that's separated from the local body of Christ because it's about accountability. It's about corporate worship. It's about all of these things happening together. And so uh, we baptize uh, members. We baptize those who are wanting to be a part of the body of Christ. We give the Lord's Supper to those who are good in good standing in the body of Christ. And you know, there's a lot of different ways that people participate in the Lord's Supper in terms of, do you have to be a member at this church or that church? Man, we, we recognize that it's about the body of Christ coming together, um, and that's primary for us. And so um, these things are not devoid of, of the corporate gathering. They are a part of the corporate gathering. And it's not an individual thing. It's a corporate thing that we participate in these together, and we rejoice over them together. Um, if you've been a part of seeing baptisms, you've been a part of a church that participates in the Lord's Supper, you know it's an edifying time of growing together in Christ. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. It's a little bit of a shorter one, but we're excited to continue to move forward next week uh, as we talk about the Lord's Day. And man, we're running through this thing and we're almost done. And we thank you guys so much for being a part of it. We hope that it has been a great foundational piece as we continue to understand why we believe, what we believe, and what the Bible has to say about these things. God bless, guys. Man, we'll see you on Sunday. We're looking forward to our Easter celebration as we're getting closer and closer. Don't forget this Sunday we have our services at 9, 30, and 11. We'd love for you guys to join us.